Praise the Lord. Now, we have all been seated here, but it is important that um, we get to know some of the profile that are seated here. And that is also to show you how important this program is. Reverend Duam is the Director of Missions and Evangelism in the PFN or Job Province. And like we said, he has been a chapter chairman and has served in various capacities as an um, advisor to the chapters. And then in this administration, he became the director of missions and evangelism. He was a retired naval officer. I remember recently, I called him. We have to discuss on one-on-one. And he said, Chairman, I will call you back. I am on evangelism. Praise God. So we are not just having men who came here to hear the word of God. We are practicing pastors who are living the kingdom life, who are seated here with us. Now, the man that will be taking the testimony, he just met me out there and said, I have testimony, so. And then I came here and I sat down. Reverend Pat came up and said, I'm led to say that Bishop Bart will take the testimony. Praise God. And I said, as you are laid. Now, Bishop Bart is the chairman, we call him, the, he's the chapter chairman of Shibiri chapter of the PFN in his second term. But he's the chairman of all the chapter chairmen in Ojo province. We have 21 chairmen. So he coordinates all the chairmen. And then, as you look at him, there's no way we will not go for Jesus. I think I said something yesterday about him and the wife when we were talking. So please, we didn't give them platform to bring uh, a specific teaching. But that does not uh, mean that they cannot handle any of this teaching. Listen to them and you'll be blessed. God bless you. Hallelujah. Sir, thank you for this great privilege. I'm so grateful. I'm not taking it very light. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the first question is, uh, please help differentiate between human will and human ability. Is his will not an ability he has? That's number one. Sharing of tracks today is discouraging because as we share it, you see people dropping it on the ground. Some even squeeze it and throw it away. One. Pastor. That belongs to this body. Yet. What are the practices in their churches are different from the measure is this body, what measure is this body putting in place to call them to others? That is to say, pastors that belong to this body, yet what they practice are in their churches are so different from, the, from this body. What measure are we putting to put, call them to others? Praise the Lord. Proverbs says, the gift of a man will make a room for him. Please, sir, how will you relate this to the error in the pianist who says he has spent a lot of time in his life learning and mastering the piano and how now requesting for payment from the church to plead for them? Praise the Lord. These are the questions. Can I, can I repeat? Yeah. 
The gift of a man will make a way for him. Please, how will you relate to this error in the pianist who say he has spent a lot of, of time in his life learning and mastering piano, now requesting for payment from the church to play, to play for them? The second one is... Uh, Sharing of tracks today is so discouraging because as you share it, you see people dropping it on the ground. Some even squeeze it and throw it away. So what can be done about that? Pastor that belongs to this body yet, what they practice in their churches are different. What measure is this body putting in place? So call them to others. Please help me differentiate between human ability and will. I see this one very well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I expected questions from the teachings. Uh, quite a number of the questions are coming from more abstract experiences of Christian life. I have been, been one Christian, not a pastor, who is so concerned about the level of poverty among Christians among Christians. I grew up as a young convert, spending my life, my resources for the expansion of the kingdom of God, not caring whether the church has one naira or the other. And that has brought me to where I am today. Now, if you look at the author of the church or the origin the originator of the church jesus christ today you will also observe that it was a man that was not placed on salary for any reason and the people that were not even registered member of the team were committed with a very unconditional burden to minister to his needs some of them are mary and martha's family Nicodemus and Joseph the Arimathea. They were not part of the regular disciples, but they were the financiers of the ministry. Now the gospel has been given to us, and one of the clinical phrases in the Bible that freely you have received, freely go and give. Let me start with the musician who is a, a pianist. It is good to be encouraged for what you do for God because it takes much of your time. We are not opposed in encouraging our artisans in the church. But we are opposed to the fact that you can play keyboard and drum. That becomes your profession. And that subject you to bargain to an extent that you ask the church to pay you what they are not paying their pastors. That's not acceptable. I have a son. I have three children. One of the last one is a, a boy. His name is Samuel. He's a graduate now. He has started working. As of today, I think he's the best drummer in the whole of satellite. He now plays keyboard. And um, early last year, he was taught how to handle the studio. So he has also become an engineer. 
is not on the church allowance, not because it's my son. He has this as a law, even when he was in the university. My father said to me, I must not receive money for what I do for God with my gift. I think that should be the discipline. There are so many things you can know that can give you money. Playing instrument in the church is just an extra curriculum of your capacity. You can use it to bless God. But if you want it to give you life, you will not have a church. You will not serve God well. You have commercialized your gift. And it might not earn you eternity. So look at it that way. The greatest thing, what do I do that will guarantee my heaven? Praise God. We have also a, 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 a young man in our church, Brother Ezekiel. The father is a bishop in Oweri. When he came to our church, he so matured on the keyboard. And so we considered, because he just got married to one of our daughters in the choir. And so he loved our church. And then, because the father's church is not here, he resolved to be part of our church. And we called him to the office when the month ended, just to encourage him. And he said this, my father warned me never to receive money for using my gift for God. And he said, no, 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 no. I will never violate what my father told me. God will supply my needs. Praise God. Let us remember that we came into the church as worshippers. And as God saw a need, he placed a burden on your life. And by grace, you acquired a skill. So you were motivated to learn it by the church. I have also watched children who came into the church and used the church to learn how to play drum. The moment they perfected, they start pricing themselves. And before you know it, they are out to environment that they never know the foundation. Don't set money ahead of your service. God blesses the church to bless you. Let it be. And that will be our answer to that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yesterday, as I um, Reverend Patrick was teaching on evangelism. Tracts were shared to you. Did you find time to go through that tract? Now, it's not every tract that you can share. There are tracts that are so watered. People are under pressure. There are some things that can touch their soul. In 1988, when I was leading a group of youths, my responsibility was to write track every month, print the track with my money for the use of the entire youth ministry. And we evangelized the campuses around the nation. The church has no budget for tracks. And those tracks were written on inspiration based on our field experiences those tracks we are tracks written and powered by grace because you know the cost of those those tracks okay the cost of labor and the value placed on them by grace when it leaves your hand it becomes a mantle praise god when it leaves your hand it becomes what a mantle. Everyone that receives it, there will be something about it. You don't just carry a track. You didn't pray on it. You didn't even know who wrote it. Some of them were just put together because some Nigerians are taking money from some missionaries to put together so that they can be tracked. Yes, it can have a meaning, but it have no direction and definition. I don't believe that track are useless. Once you are sharing the track, you are fulfilling the mandate. If somebody drops this on the ground, it's not meant for him. Somebody else will pick it. The wind will carry it to where the track will be read. Praise God. So don't bother yourself about what happened to the track that have been received from your hand. Bother yourself about who and who do I share the track to. 
that person that drop it have his answers to give to God. But the track would always reach his target. Now the track we shared with you yesterday, if you are the, the head of your church that you are here, go back and read it. I was in the plane to Rwanda and then there was a call on the plane. If you're a medical doctor in this plane, please, there's an emergency in the first class, you know, coach area. I was on economy class. I was not on first class. Praise God. And so, I, I waited. I'm not a medical doctor. I waited. The announcement came the second time. I waited. The announcement came the third time. And the more it comes, the more urgency it becomes. So I rose up from my seat. And the cabin crew asked me, are you a medical doctor? I said, no. I think I said, yes. I am not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor, but I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a pastor. I pray for people and they get healed. That's the Rwanda. He now asked me, Ask the patient if you can pray. Praise God. Because of their religion. And I have turned to the patient and said, I'm a pastor. Would you like me to pray for you? And Jesus will heal you. He said, yes. Yes. I prayed for her. And I asked the cabin crew, give her water to drink. And I went back to my seat. The boy sitting with me didn't care what was wrong. And I thought, was busy watching his video. And I said, hello. Are you aware of what is going on here? He said, what's going on? I said, somebody was dying up there. Are you a Christian? He said, no. I'm a Muslim. I said, were you at mosque last Friday? He said, no. My father said we are Muslim. Did you hear the statement? My father said we are Muslim. And I said, ah, you are even better than me. Praise God. Just learn from this. If your father said you are Muslim, it means that you even have Quran. You know about creation and God of Abraham. My father was a pagan. He said, ah. So he talked. We started talking. And I said, well, fortunately for me, I met Christ. And Christ revealed himself to me. And today I'm a preacher. Somebody had not been healed there. Say, you mean it? I said, yes. I said, if you stay on the religion of your father, when you die, you will give account to God that your father deceived you or you deceived your father. I tell you, you are like me. You were better than me, but you need to receive Jesus now. And I said, tell me about Jesus. There and then, he received Jesus. Now, that track, was written because of that encounter. The best way to convert a Muslim is that drug given to you yesterday. That person may not be a Muslim. He might be an occult, occult person or anything. But that was what we put in your hand yesterday. It's a practical encounter and that was the third reproduction that we have made on that track. Praise God. Ignore our church address. Reprint it and put your church address. It's an apostolic track. It meets every biblical scriptural standard. And it will give you the result. Praise God. And I think we will be able to, evi to revive evangelism. Okay. Human will and human ability. There are a lot of examples in the Bible. But this is just a simple way. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus teaching the disciples how to pray. Taught them. 1 verse 16. When he said. Thy will be done. On earth. As it is done in heaven. 
Jesus again praying in Matthew 26. Said to God. Not my will. But your will. If you will not take this cup away from me. If you will not take this death away from me. Well I surrender to your will. Praise God. Say not my will but your will. When you are born again or when you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, what God expects for you and I is that our own personal will stops to exist. Okay? And then soul to his own will. And God's will is in the covenant and the content of the covenant are the promises of God and the word of God. So the will of God are those things written in the Bible that God has promised you by confidence that he will do for you as you receive them, know them, and believe them. Praise God. Now remember this. We are saved by grace through faith. The reason why we are saved is that we could not save ourselves. So Jesus was the will of God sent down by men to save us. And now that he has saved us, we have no other way to survive outside him. Praise God. So, what this now means that if you have ability, skill, dreams, before you make Christ, they're real. But when you are converted and breathed upon, the spirit of God will revive those will. Praise God. And begin to use it in a profiting way. Have you not seen musicians? Who were playing in the world. And when they were converted. They began to pray the gospel music. Okay. And begin to do exploit for God. So your human ability cannot take you far. It is God's ability. Make sure that everything you do in life. Are in line. And accordance with the word of God for your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastors that belong to. Yeah we have a question here. Pastors that belong to bodies like PFN. But do different practices in their churches. We don't know any one of them. Praise God. We don't know any one of them. The ones we know, I think we are sure of them. And if there's any one of them in our midst that looks like us and doing something different, it is not to our knowledge. Praise God. But the Bible has said, You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Now that you know the truth. And have seen us. And seen where we represent. And uh, it appears that the man or woman of God is not doing the same thing. Well pray for them. That God will guide them and help them. That's not our business. Praise God. Our business is the gospel. And we will continue to pray and do the best thing. One of us said. I think it's one. He said that the curriculum for this seminar had been well researched. I said, yes, we researched it and then we put it together because we want the health of the church to be strong. And that people that are in church should know where, why they are in church and where they are going. Praise the Lord. I want, to, I want us to please know that um, um, there are so many things we cannot do here on earth. No matter how smart we are, no matter how clever we are, we should be able to at times allow judgment for God. Praise God. But if there's anything you have seen, God has enabled you to see that contravenes the scripture, you have a right to ask question. And when you ask question and they didn't answer like you they answer you well now, seek for counsel and open up. We can help heal the body entirely. Then uh, begin to suspect one another. Praise the Lord. Yeah, migration from one church to the other. And why do we allow people who leave one church to go to another person's church and the pastor allow the person that came to his church to stay? And that is the more reason why we are coming together. The best practice is this. When you see your friends, and somebody you meet in Capem, walk into your church tomorrow praise god you know the person 
that he belongs to this church. And by reason of fellowship and relationship, the person has known you as one of the friends who comes to their church to minister. And suddenly you see him in your church once. And he comes to greet you in case you don't know him. Ask him, who are you? And he tells you, I'm from Capen. Ah, hi, mommy. Hi, daddy. Why are you here today? We don't have service. I just feel I should fellowship with you. That sounds good. Praise God. But on Sunday, you see him again. Praise God. Take him to your office and find out why. And if you find out why that there are issues, maybe it's on suspension, maybe this something and it's running away, call his pastor. Praise God. I saw your son or your daughter in my church. And uh, he said, uh, he's under punishment. I've asked him to go and serve the punishment. Praise God. That is how we can help unnecessary crisis in the church. I will do this. Praise God. And that's why by the grace of God, I want to be a friend of every church. Praise God. We are to help one another because your sheep will come to you. Praise God. If the person says, ah, well, uh, I don't like that church, I like you. Tell him, your pastor and your church are so important to me for you to spoil it. Go and look for another church, not here. You have to do everything you can to protect the relationship. It is so important in ministry. It's an ethical issue. Praise God. Praise the Lord. But pastors, if you are handling a case in your church and you cannot handle it, and you know a pastor friend of you who has grace in that area, invite him. Say, please, I want you to pray for one of my daughters. Most of our pastors here do it a lot. And that has made us stronger and better. That's Sir, also, you, the nature of a sheep. Sheep are, uh, the church members are sheepish by nature. When the sheep observe that there is food in another domain, they leave that place, go there, eat, and still come back. I don't know if what I'm saying is making any sense. A sheep can leave the domain where it belongs, go to another, uh, another domain and eat, and still come back. The same thing you see church members, they move from one place to the other. When they hear there is a program in this church, they go there, get the information necessary, and they still go back to their churches. That's good. Like here, we have all gathered here. Praise God. There's nothing wrong about any association and fellowship when they are consent. You are doing convention. Yes, sir. We invited Capet. I am also having so so man of God coming to me. I would like you to send me some of your brethren to worship with me. There's nothing wrong with that. Praise God. But we must not encourage this movement that can create problem. Praise God. The God has program here. I have to go there. I have to go there. I have to go. There must be communication. There must be understanding. There must be consent. There must be approval. So that, like, if we're doing progress, church send off five, five people. Sometimes we call. I've, who came to us return back? Praise God. We have to have this ethical understanding. The situation where, because I think what, what is happening here is that some of us, some of the church members are not committed. They are not dedicated. They are not disciplined. Okay? Once a, a guest minister comes and preach, ah, that can be guest minister. It's like their pastor is not preaching anything anymore. Okay? They want the man's phone number. They want to start calling. They want to start doing things. If you go and check their record in the church, they are not committed. Either they are not tightened, they are not doing anything. Where your treasure is, there your mind will be also. Stay where God has sent you. Build it up. Invest on it and make it grow. When your pastor knows that he needs that man of God, he will bring him. Praise God. And the grace will be imparted. That is how we should mature and grow. Praise the Lord. We have spent our time. Thank you, sir.
I hope you have been blessed by that. The next thing on the agenda is testimony. You have a testimony, can I see you wave your hand? Based on what has happened in this program. Today is the grand finale. Or maybe you attended this conference when we went to Iba. Iba District hosted us some time ago. Maybe you were there. And maybe here. You have a testimony, can we see you? As we welcome Bishop Bart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you, sir. This is a very great privilege. And that's an opportunity for me to share my testimony. But before then, is there anybody that has testimony here? Please, can you come forward to share your testimony? For these three days have been so wonderful. And uh, you've been blessed. Please come forward and share your testimony. Anybody? Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I think the first thing, our testimony is that I'm happy you are here. That is my first testimony. Because I'm highly blessed. I'm highly blessed. On Sunday night, Apostle Edo called me and said, that, that program at Cape is starting tomorrow. I said, I'm aware. Then I got prepared in the morning and I came here. And uh, I, I saw our father with his calls. Then when I got back home, something happened in the night. I slept earlier. Then I woke up at about 1 to pray. And I prayed at about 4 o'clock. At about 4.30, I went back to sleep. So that during that period, between 4.30 and 6, I had a very, I don't know whether I call it revelation. Because I'm not a prophet, I'm a pastor. Uh, I, I, I saw myself that daddy was around, as Apostle Tulu was around. He came to my chapter, she really took me chapter. And uh, it was after ministering like this, and people like this, he went to his car and brought out uh, some pa uh, packages. He shared some palliative, I don't even know what it is, but he was sharing to the women. Then he shared envelope, khaki envelope to the men. I said, ah, what of my own? He was going to tell me, ah, leave your own, you are your guy here, leave your own. I said, I can never be sharing something in my place, you are not giving me my own. Praise the Lord. In that process, he told me what to do for my wife. And uh, when I came on Monday, I told him I won't, I won't go be here the following day because... I want to see somebody somewhere. I said, okay. But when I go back that morning, I remember that that is my wife's birthday. I said, no, I will not go out today. I will stay with her for this birthday. So, mommy, get ready. We are coming to this program. In that dream or revelation, he prayed for my wife. In that dream. I told him, I called him in the morning. I said, testimony is already there. You pray for my wife in the dream. I'm bringing her here. I have canceled that my trip. I will not go again. I bring her here so that we pray. So, okay, bring her. Let me tell you, last night, this woman slept like a baby. And uh, the trouble we see in the night, you want to urinate, I had to get up, I had to. Say, I did myself, I didn't even know when they break. I said, hey, <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, that's the second testimony. And there's a woman in my chapter, uh, is one of our members of CWC. Uh, she has been sick too. And uh, before I start to tell her, I say, are you not going to be in this program? This is the third day. You people, when they call you, will not come. What is your problem? I said, you know I'm not feeling fine. But I've taken the last treatment last night. I said, okay, try and come today. Before I, so I said, I saw Apostle Tulu praying for me last night in this dream. Before I now told her how mommy came here yesterday, the whole people prayed for, uh, for her. I said, please, I'm coming today so that I will pray with me also because you pray with me in the, in the dream. Praise the Lord. God is in this program. 
And uh, in this program, I've discovered that uh, there are a lot of things that we have really kept behind that we are not doing. And thank God for this apostolic training that is coming up now. And I want to plead with us that let us grab it. If you have not gotten the manual, go and get this manual. If I had 1,005, it's a small money. Many of you buy a chart card, buy what you call data for, for your phone, and within two, three days, it's gone. But if you get this 1,005 for this pro, for what is it, for the manual, it's going to help you. So, sir, I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to you for and, uh, the God you serve that uh, what I saw in the dream came up physically. And uh, I'm not going to call myself a prophet now. It's here. But I'm still a pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Have you been blessed by that testimony? Okay, because we use the word testimony, you, you want to come uh, with the word testimony, some people are not coming out. Okay, we want you to give us feedback about this program, your experience. We want about two or three people to say, this is what I have learned, or this is what I have gained. Yes, another person. Come. Okay. The, the first daddy that testified is Bishop Bart. Praise the Lord. So you give us your name, your uh, ministry or church where you are coming from and testify or tell us your experience. Are you coming? Come. That is all we can take. I will give you a testimony as we close this section. So, you are number one, you are number two, you are number three, you are number four. Come forward. Line up. We want to see you on the screen. Come this way. So, one, two, three, three, three here, four. Face the, uh, face the other. So, thank you, man. You know, I, I want to follow the procedure. I'll hold the microphone. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please permit me to just sing a song for God. Praise the Lord. I just want to appreciate God for bringing me into this meeting. It's a wonderful one. I met the guy that did the banner at Okoko. So when I saw the program, I was very happy. I told him, let me just snap it so that I will get the address. So every day, God continued to remind me about the program. When he reminded me, something would just wave it up. Yesterday, he was disturbing me. Go and check where you snap the picture. I went there, I shouted, I said, God, have mercy. The program started on Monday. I must be here today. And immediately, I came in. Ah, I said, God, was it what I was missing all this while? And I was... I, I sat there, I was like, God, have mercy because I know like two of my friends are supposed to come with and they would not be happy with me when I got home to tell them what happened today. I said, the God that touched me to go and search that place, I snapped the program. May his name be exalted. And the man of God that preached when I entered, ah, I don't know what to say, but God will bless him mightily. And all the programs that I've missed, I connect my spirit with all the teachings. I know I will not go home without grabbing, without connecting, without having impact to all the programs I've missed since on Monday in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Did you mention your name? My name is Evangelist Joy Ibo Achusi, author of Solution Ministry. Sele Ojo Alaba. Thank you. Put your hands together. Thank you. This is number two. Thank you. Your name? Praise the Lord. My name is Vera. Uh, this is my first time since I've ever been in Lagos since 2000, the year 2000. Before I went to school, I attended one minister's conference uh, under PFM like this, and it was so good. But since I came to Lagos, it's like, I beg, all this uh, minister's conference, it doesn't really what it and all of that there was one day we were going for my church was going for for at satellite 
They dragged me, dragged me, dragged me. I did not go. And since Wednesday, uh, Monday that I've been here, it has been so fulfilling, so enriching, so beautiful. And I promise that any time this program is going to be held, if I have the time and I'm available, I must surely attend by God's grace. Thank you. Come closer, come closer. Come closer, sir. Come closer, sir. Thank you. Your name? Praise the Lord. My name is Asa Sophia. I'm from Capem. I just want to thank God for this opportunity, and I want to thank our daddy for bringing this um, conference to our church. Like, it's my first time of attending a minister conference, so it's very, very, like, I'm so blessed. I just want to say thank you to daddy, and thanks for staying with us. Like, most uh, ministers that will host the program, you will not see the host. You just like, <laughs> where's our host now? He's coming. But every time he's always there, and when I, whenever I see him, he smiles and everything, gives me joy. I'm like, wow, Pastor Tuli is here. Because I used to read his... Um, seat of dominion every morning like i'm like ah, this daddy is so much sometimes when he explains some things in the dominion like i'm like i wish to see this daddy every day but i'm so privileged to see him these three days is here smiling shining ah and i just want to thank god that the first day i was omitted like i was wearing the same clothes today I'm like wow thank god though the second day, I was not wearing the same clothes, like, ah, no problem. But today, I was a meeting, like, we're wearing the same I was like, ah, daddy, I received from this grace and anointing. And I want to say, daddy, God bless you, sir, for all the messages, all the pastors that preach. I was so blessed. Like, ah, I was like, if so, we had to go out to get this kind of message to be costly. And I was like, wow, we got it in a cheap. I didn't even buy this. And I was like, ah, I have to go and get that stuff. Thank you very much for bringing it to our, our church. And I want to thank our daddy, Gio, to our mommy, Gio. God bless them, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Where is God? My name is Femi Lesomi. As an evangelist in this church, Captain. Wow. I would like to say that since the inception of this conference, it has been so amazing. Every aspect of the teaching lecture is so powerful. And personally, for me, I think it has put me on a right track, on some things I have not been doing as an evangelist that I ought to have been doing. No, nobody can appraise you except God himself. So, so time, when you do a thing, you be expecting somebody. But time, it's not worth it. And particularly, when our daddy, Apostle Utulu, was discussing who is a minister, I think that should be on Monday. We started with that lecture. Uh, and I said, as, an, as a minister, we are a boarding biara. Over time, I used to boarding biara. I now sat down, I look at it. Am I the duo of the church? But I will not mention. <laughs> no, it's so funny. It's so funny. When you say you are a boarding biara as a minister, I was not looking at it from that category, a burden bearer. Oftentimes, we pray for our leaders, we pray for our pastor, we pray for our... But he said it goes beyond that. That when you are having your personal prayer, you have to stand in the gap for something. That thing happens to um, Elisha. Elisha also said that, that if you cannot pray for them, you have not done anything, if you, are, you have not interceded. Ah, so, does it mean that I haven't done my prayer, I haven't done prayer, and I did not even pray for somebody... That means I've not done well. I think now I have a new change of heart towards that. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Have you been blessed? Okay, we are going to take the last dose. Praise the Lord. How many of you were at Iba? Iba, Iba, Iba. You know, this conference came from Iba to this axis. Praise the Lord. We want to bless God. Something happened at Iba. On the last day of this meeting, so I want to tell you something. Today is very crucial. Today is very what? Well, crucial. And uh, when we concluded, I was leaving the meeting. If you know Iba Housing Estate, you know it. So I, w I got to the gates. Suddenly I met a madman. A young man is about 34 years, but he has been mad for 12 years. 
I don't know. Whenever I see him, he was a chairman. Find me something now. That's how he approaches everybody. He, he, he's, he was always asking for money. But that day, I don't know. Because it was not me. I said, I won't give you money today. I will not. And immediately, I just followed him up. I started praying for him. Sir, Amma, what happened was I was shocked. He just cooperated. He started receiving the prayer. And immediately, he became calm. He became calm and said, okay, right now, I'm going to change your clothes. He cooperated. I said, okay, where is he going to take his bath? How are we going to get clothes? Somebody just pointed to a public toilet at the gate there. And, you know, we took him to that place. He took his bath, which outside there, this would that sell uh, okay clothes. I got a trouser and a shirt. He put it on immediately and he changed. He changed. I was surprised. And then we now went into the estate where he lives. And uh, we went to the canteen. The woman said, I used to give him. I said, today you are not going to be a beggar. Sit down on the chair. Let them serve you food. And people say, Uche, is this Uche? I say, it's Uche. Because it just changed automatically. Praise the Lord. And we started looking for them. Parents. He has been in that estate for 12 years. Begging. And I, the first person I met said, the mother is dead. The second person said, I know the mother is dead. But they say, go and meet this person. We started moving from place to place, shop to shop. Until we located a woman. He says it's the mother's friend. I said, where is the mother? He said, the mother is alive. It's, we gave me the number. We called. The mother said, I will be around by 12 noon the next day. And the mother showed up the next day. And immediately, because for 12 years, he has lost a lot of things. I called psychiatric hospital. I said, okay, they just need to look at him again. Fortunately, we have a pastor that works there. Immediately connected me. We took him to psychiatry. They checked him. They were very angry with the mother. See, for 12 years, you allow this child to be roaming the street. But the mother said, you know, it's the enemy. It's not even the mother. And to God be the glory, the mother worships with us. The, the boy comes to church. The boy is settling down. That was what happened. I proved to this as Iba when we got there. To God be all the glory. Now we want to welcome our apostle, our father in the Lord, who God has been using. I met him. That is why I robbed myself into this. Praise the name of the Lord. And it has been worthwhile. My life has changed. Praise the name of the Lord. I've gotten enough knowledge and uh, to God be the glory. Amen. Shall we welcome apostle Dr. Utsulu as he runs off this section for today. There's going to be impartation. Don't take it for granted as you begin to pray. Something will happen to you. Something will happen to you. Something will happen to you. And what is that that will happen to you? Jesus will happen to you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your time. It is an investment. It's time investment into the covenant stream. And God shall respond. Every time you spend developing yourself is the wisest time of your life. It is better, stronger than the time you use working to earn money. Men and women who develop their life live longer and live better than their equals. This is what our father did not teach us early, apart from some churches that are very wise now. We will continue to take this message around the world until Jesus is revealed in the heart of every man. Praise God. Now, before I begin with our teaching, I'd like you to take note of this team that organized this particular conference. Mommy Samson, 
and the husband Benga are our chief host for this program. They hosted us not by compulsion. They passionately requested that we should bring the program here. And um, they surprised us in no small way that we don't know how the generator has been powered since Monday. It has been their responsibilities. Almost 75% of the entertainment on our break lunch has been done by the church. They have provided resource persons for this program by making sure that the, the team, the instrumentalists are here at no charge. And above all, they mobilized their members to participate. So they did not just give all the hall and walk away. They gave all the hall and sat down. Praise the Lord. Help me celebrate this family. May the good God continue to show them his mercies and wonders all the days of your lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, quickly, we have... Um, Two of them majorly that uh, coordinated this program, and they are Reverend Patrick Adiakose from Foursquare. Now, those of you that have knowledge of Foursquare know that they are 247 busy. Praise God. In fact, if you are there, you have to know that you are there to be able to be qualified to be there. Now, to be able to have time for extra kingdom matters can only be an act of God. So, we, he has um, announced it to his um, immediate bosses, and they have endorsed this program. In fact, personally, when we did it in Eba, all of them did not go to anywhere from the district of Asia to every one of them until the day we were done. So, Reverend Patrick, we are not surprised at that encounter you will experience greater miracles and the good lord will continue to honor you honor your ministry and honor your pastors who has found faith in you praise the lord and the apostle dr Sivanos edo is also a young pastor the overseer of better things christian center and as he is there, he is the chairman of Mebamu chapter of PFN. Praise God. He's been one of the faithful tools in this movement. And uh, he has taken this message far. His wife is here. Mama Edo, can you just lift up your hands? You won't even know she's the one. It was the daughter that sang for us in the morning. Praise God. We pray that the Lord will continue to celebrate you anywhere you go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, you, you heard from Apostle Elisha yesterday when he took us on prayers, dynamics of prayers. Okay? He's also a chapter chairman of uh, Imude Orita chapter of the PFN. Apart from his ministry and other things that he does. He just returned back from mission from Kotonou. Praise God. You know, he went there for a whole week. Proclaim the word of God. He's a member of this team. Help me celebrate this man of God. Now we also have as one of the tools of this team, Apostle Chima. He's coordinated the meeting yesterday. He came all the way from um, Ejibo. You know Ejibo? It's solo. That's, that's all the way he comes here since yesterday what a sacrifice help me celebrate this man of god for the value he has added now i've just talked about reverend dr duam and reverend uh, bishop dr bart now uh, bishop reverend victor coyote dr victor coyote has just ministered to us he's the dean of faculty of alec and also a long-standing secretary of our mission unit 
a very great man of God who has a great heart of service. Help me celebrate him. Now, we have our local church staff team, regular staff team. You see them. The man on camera is my personal assistant and also resident pastor to one of our branch. His name is Pastor Bram Tamano. He's been with me for 14, 15 years now. Praise God. And um, we won't have more time to talk. Uh, yesterday, I told you about the missionary from Liberia, who is a resident pastor in the cathedral, Pastor Savage Abraham, the man on the iPad camera. Now, we shut down all the office. We also have Minister Grace Jacob. Of course, the family house here is in Ajamba, so it's very easy for her, but you are not seeing this since yesterday. It's our church secretary. It, all of you that read the city of dominion, that is the girl who labor every month to make sure that we reach the world. Please help us celebrate her. They don't know you now. Lift up your hands. Praise the Lord. Then for the seminar documentations and the administration, we call him a student affairs and mission affairs officer. We have Minister Bosse. A Bosse de Fabo. Praise God. These people are crack team. Sometimes, 24 hours, they work for the Lord. Now, it is very, very good that um, they are recognized. I want to thank all our fathers from the first square, from the PFN. We have Pastor Abel, the chairman of Imudo Risa, seated at the back there. We have the province protocol seated at the back there. We have senior pastor from first square seated in some places here. We have evangelist blessing. Blessing. It's also one of the pioneering members of this team. Seated there at the back. God bless you. Mama Ba, thank you for being here yesterday and today. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to do two quick things. Then we do the impartation. I want to show you some secrets of this work. And I want you to take your note. I will show you as a Christian, as a pastor, as a church worker, how God has made arrangement for the funding of the church. I'm going to do that in a very brief time that we complete what we began yesterday and we pray. Would that be okay? All right. So the first note we're going to look at, open your Bible with me to the book of um, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Father, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Glorify your name at this seminar closes today. Your sons and daughters are come from far and near. They've come from far and near. Not just to see our faces, but to have an encounter with you. Reveal yourself to them. Show your glory in their life. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. John chapter 6 and verse 35. Are you there? John 6 and verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Can I give you a little advice? Learn to start carrying your Bible from now. And try to discourage yourself from reading the Bible from your phone. It will help you. Your phone has Bible. But your phone is not holy. So many content of your phone will not allow you to see the holiness of the world. When you carry your Bible, it is called Holy Bible. 
the only content of the Bible is the fingerprint of God who is holy in himself. You will overcome destruction. You will see farer and deeper inside. That's how we grew up as Christians. This modernity is good, but we have to control it. Praise the Lord. John chapter 6 and verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. That's an introduction. It's no longer news how he used five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 men outside women and children. It's no longer news how he used five loaves to feed 4,000 men outside men and women. Why? During his temptation, he said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone. Sometimes, bread does not need bread to survive. Because bread himself is bread. There are so many things Jesus said about himself that the church are not thinking. One of them is saying, I am the door. By me, men enter. And then, they receive great pastors. I am the door. So, when doors are shut against you, and you are carrying Jesus on the inside. And in, in Matthew 18, in Matthew um, 16, and verse 19, he said, Though you are Peter, upon you I will build my church. And today I give unto you the keys. Somebody said the keys. The keys to the kingdom of God. Those keys are spiritual keys that open spiritual doors for the pouring of the providence. The word providence are provisions of God. Now, when he said, I am the bread of life, it's an introduction, a definition of his identity. I'm so this afternoon to remind you that Jesus who serve is the bread of life. And this implies that when you serve Jesus, you cannot go hungry. Do I have a witness in the house? If you have Jesus, you will not do what? You cannot go hungry. To them, they receive him. He gave power to become his extension. So he is the bread of life. That is by introduction, by definition, by identification. I am the bread of life. Are you lacking bread? Which symbolizes, are you lacking food? Are you lacking water? Are you lacking health? Tell me what you can do to make up bread. The constituent or the spices to make up bread. How to do with a lot of things. You need yeast. You need flour. Made out of several ingredients. You need water. Sometimes you need sugar. Praise God. So if you can recognize the content of bread. Or the constituents of bread. And the spices that go with bread. And then qualify them. You will be able to see what Jesus means. And how much Jesus means to us. I am the bread of life. This night and this month. Jesus shall reveal himself to us. As the bread of life. Now look at the next line that follows here. It says, He that cometh to me shall never hunger. It didn't say may not hunger. He that cometh to me 
shall never hunger. There are possibilities of obstacles. There are possibilities of factors that may make you fear the word of God is not working. The word of God that will not work God you have not discovered. The word of God that will not work is the word of God that you have discovered but you have not believed. God cannot deny himself. God cannot deny his word. So he said, once you come to me, you start living. And I said to you, you have existed enough. It is time for you to start living. I didn't hear living amen. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Once you receive him and come to him, he assumes the responsibility of your welfare and your awareness. I relate with God, not on my head knowledge, but on my insightful knowledge, insightful revelation of what the word of God says about him. Come on over here. That was the greatest secret of David. Solomon saw it and followed it. Now look at the next line. There's a difference between come to him and believe in him. Believing him if it's a deeper walk with God. It's what? A deeper walk with God. It's, it's, it is a progression from the stage we are to the stage that he is, is connecting us and bringing so he said here and he that believeth on me shall never test shall never test when we closed from here yesterday we drove for four hours to our church and our family annual conference began on Monday. We got to church by a few minutes after 7. We left church by 10. We got home by about 11 o'clock. I went to bed by about 2.33. Praise God. I am here now. I am 61 by August. Praise God. So the test they're talking here is not drinking water. There's such a supply of energy driven by visions, purposeful vision. God doesn't supply strength to people who are moving aimlessly. A wise man say, every God-given vision are powered by supernatural strength. Praise God. Now, he that cometh to me shall never test. That talks about power. The kingdom of God is all about power. When there is sickness developing in us, they, are, they have a mission to drain us, to kill us, to dry us. But God in us comes to nourish us. Praise God. Renew us. Refresh us. Revive us. And make us look the way he wants to live. God has no age. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Question means he does not grow weak. He does not grow strong. And the Bible says to them that receive him, he gave them power to become like him. So why am I serving God and I'm so weak? Why am I serving God and I'm so poor? It's because you are not placing demand on the word of God. I'm saying it to provoke you. Why am I so poor? You have not believed the gospel. If you believe the gospel, you will practice the gospel. The life of the church is embedded on the providence of the scripture. The word of God are not given to us for entertainment to encourage us. They are given to us to live the life of the kingdom and to make us a mystery to our world. I see God renewing your strength. I see God reviving your spirit. Somebody rise on your feet and shout. I shout like this. I am full of power. 
I'm not hearing you. By the Spirit of God. I am full of fire. By the Spirit of God. Now some of you up there, drop whatever is in your hand. You are not doing it well. Everything in your hand, drop it. We are not joking here. If you are right, don't write what I'm saying now. Drop anything. Drop everything. It's not about writing now. It's about receiving. Help me tell the young man now. Drop your papers. Praise God. Close your eyes and lift up your hand. Now, breathe in and breathe out. In. Out. In. In. Out. Now shout. I am full of power. Let me hear that again. Let me hear that again. By the Spirit of God. I am full of the Holy Ghost. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I am filled with power. I feel with fire in the name of Jesus. Lord, manifest your glory. Lena ne karya dada. I para bada bore. Reke deke deke de. I kara mana ma shandala ba. Rana da kalaba dode. I koroboro shandala. Rana na kaya dada dada. Something will happen to you this afternoon. Is happening already somewhere there. The power of God is upon your head, it's upon your life, it's upon your mouth, it's upon your eye, it's upon your life. The power of God is upon you, it's upon everything around you, it's upon your destiny. Somebody shout, I am full of power. When you are getting to it, somebody out there by my left, shout, I am full of power. By the spirit of Jesus. Lord, let your hand be stretched upon your people. Let your fire carry your people. They have worked on their natural senses and all. Let your anointing and your oil come upon them now. Everything your life is looking for is available for you now. Receive it. Man of God, you can be filled with a new fountain, a new measure, a new, inf a new influence that are in the supernatural. Yes, it is possible. Go into the next level.
I love the way you celebrated the grace of God. And I believe that new oil can come upon you now. Come and receive. Say, I receive a new torch of fire. 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 I see hunger in this woman and the grace of God is coming upon this hunger. I see the grace and the glory of God. I see hunger and I see fire of God coming upon this woman. Everything your life is looking for is restored. Let her go down. Let her. Down. Let her sit down. Help her. Let her sit down. Let her sit down. We are not coming to this stage now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You know, an aspect of this program can be centered on power. But one of the mandates of this program is that we have to raise a generation that uses power with knowledge. Uses power with what? Elijah was so powerful but he had no knowledge of how to maximize the profit of power. So everything that comes is where he kills. Praise God. If I be a man of God, let fire come down. Fire can always burn when you want fire to burn. If we don't want to do anything now, say, okay, fire burn everywhere. Fire will burn until we close. Praise God. So I'd like you to know that if I were a privilege like Elijah, I will convert a lot of army in my camp. I will convert Jezebel. I will convert Ahab. And I will restore Israel. But he demonstrated his power. And got angry that God has stopped killing. Praise God. God didn't kill Jezebel. So he resigned. When you have knowledge, you will utilize that knowledge and apply your power wisely. Praise God. Many things that can begin to serve as a gain, strength to you, you kill. If you were God, you would have killed the whole world. God is watching Boko Haram, killing his people, burning his church. And God is watching. Our death is not a loss to God. Our death is gain to God. Problem God has and that if he killed them, they will go and meet his enemy. So it's patient. In this conference, you will gain knowledge. Yeah. A prophet has told you, your mother-in-law is your problem. is a witch. Every problem in this house, die, die. So every month, every year, you are burying people. People that should be repenting. And generating money to support you. You are busy killing them and burying them. So you cannot settle down. Salvation will enter your house. Close your eyes one more time. 
Shout it again. Close your eyes. Shout it again. I am, I am full of power. Kingdom power. Holy Ghost power. By the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wave your hand to the Lord. Wave your hand to the Lord. Now you may be seated. Now you have heart that once you come to him, you will not hungry. So he take responsibility. Stop blaming your husband and blaming your wife and blaming your generation. What is not working in your life. Hold God responsible and release your faith to place a demand that God has pledged that when you come to him, you will never hunger. When the first set of ministers were ordained in Dominion Gate, the prophecy that came to them is that as long as they remain faithful to the work, they will never struggle to meet needs. Are we here? So if God actually is the one who has called you, it's more than enough. And it has more than enough to meet your needs. But the truth is that it meets your needs. It doesn't meet your wants. The difference between needs and wants Go and find out from economics. I'm a pastor. Praise the Lord. Are we here? So if you're not in the ministry, God does not take responsibility to fund what he has not found. I don't like my members calling me founder because if I accept I'm a founder then I'll be able to fund what I have found did you get it? so none of us including our great fathers are not founders we are simply servants God has responsibility to fund what he has found I will build my church. Also, implying, I will form my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The fourth episode of Proof Producer Conference will be in September third week at Satellite. And we are going to major open up the mysteries of kingdom funding and financing praise the lord so i'm not going to waste much time here there are several sources of funding in the church as you can find in the bible if you're a christian what god has discovered or has said are the basis for funding in the church is also what will fund your life. Are we here? Because members of the church are hand and eyes and leg of the church. In Exodus 34, I'm going to be fast now. Exodus 34, God talked about the feast of first fruit. Can I hear someone say the feast of first fruit? Now, sometimes when a church talks about first fruit, the pastors are misdefined. But if you understand the mystery of that page, Exodus 34, that was the very chapter when Moses returned back to the mountain for another 40 days and 40 nights. Because by anger, he broke the first law. And God said to him, return back. No mercy. As you were not able to control your anger, 
Go and repeat the exam. Every believer that has not overcome that, that have not overcome anger cannot hardly cannot easily settle down. You know why? You will find yourself going back to what you have overcome. God hates anger. As close as Moses was, he did not spare Moses. He said, Moses, go back. The only solution is another 40 days. Another 40 nights. No food, no water. One of the commandments he received from that second missionary journey was the feast of first fruit. That also talk about the feast of weeks and the feast of ingathering. The feast of weeks talks about church conventions and anniversaries. That is spiritual time to renew our mind and our spirit. But the feast of first fruit is, is expected for every believer like every New Testament Israelite to return to God with the first harvest of their labor for the year. Praise God. And then the feast of ingathering at the year end is your annual thanksgiving. Now God is paid that when you receive your first major income, you report it to the church. Praise God. And then he said three things will happen to you. You are not half them there. Three blessings. Feast of first fruits, feast of weeks, feast that's page 33. Then he said, when you do this, three blessings will follow. He will chase away the nations, verse, verse 24 of that particular chapter. He will chase away the nations that are before us. He will enlarge our coast. He will guarantee and preserve what belongs to us. Those are the three full blessings that follow the obedience for first fruit. Praise God. Now, first fruit are used by wise churches for investment and capital projects, inclusive of the pastor's lives and workers' lives and maintenance of the assets of the church. Praise God. It's not just something given to the man of God. It's something dropped at the altar of God where the man of God serves God. Praise the Lord. Did you catch on that? Another source of income is called seed of faith. You see so many vows in the Bible. So many vows in the Bible. When Abraham received the three wise men and gave them a very early morning and breakfast of a whole goat that the wife cooked, that is an act of seed of faith. Praise God. Praise God. Now, when um, Gideon also offered to the angel, that is an act of seed of faith. Seed of faith are sacrifices you give to God in anticipation of what you are believing God to do. Are we here? Another source of income is building offering. Building offering. Building offering all through these kings. You will see when Solomon was building. Every family in Israel gathered. And they said we must participate in the building. And they were dropping. Where they would have built some houses. They covered with material. And Solomon announced. Tell every family to stop. That we have gotten enough. And some other family said no. We will not stop. And that was why Solomon began to build a state. Praise God. The materials were so much in excess that he decided to utilize them and began to build a state. Praise God. Everybody was involved. When there is a need for project or property project or instrument project, people are expected to rise in the church to commit themselves to it. Don't carry it on your head and by having sleepless night. The next one is Titan. 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 Now, Titan is also another foundational area. Many people don't believe in Titan. But if you don't believe in Titan, things will continue to be tight. If you don't go to native doctors, you go to church. God has expected you. Give me one tenth of all that I gave to you. Page 40, that on page um, 94, 94. Okay, 93, 94. Praise God. So you, you see all those things there. And we also have special feast, like anniversary. Uh, God, people have come to kind of do special things. You need to know all those things. 
I will have made note on those sources of incomes. Now, application of form are also stated in that note. And uh, for details of that, you can go over to the Apostolic Minister and Ministries, I think chapter 3 or chapter 2, you will be able to see full detail. How can I retain and sustain financial flow as a Christian and as a pastor? They are also there in the note. You will see here that we are stating that you, God believes in faithfulness. God also believes on several things. What are the things that can hinder financial flow? Now, our note here stated um, stated um, few things. Stated few things that um, you will be able to find out there. What are they? But one of them is greed, disobedience. And of course, every manner of uh, worldliness. So we won't have time to deal more on that. But I'd like you to know that God has not called you without making provision. If you have been called by God, study your Bible based on those outlines in your hand. Teach it to your members. Believe it yourself. You will see your ministry finances change. As this pastor that are here, they are testimonies to what we are sharing. Praise God. This can definitely change when we do the right thing. Okay. If you have a question on that, you can say right and uh, we, will, we will connect to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bow down your head and thank God for speaking to you about his plans for your finances. Tell the Lord that now I believe that I am not saved to be wasted in poverty. Rather, I believe that I am saved to be better. There is appointment for finances upon my life. There's appointment to meet needs. I will be faithful to you, God. I'll be obedient to your command. From the new season, I will pay my first fruit. And I will believe you for your threefold blessings. I will pay my tithe. I will believe you for open heaven. Open windows. Open doors. Surpluses in my storehouses. And rebuking of devourers. I will practice seed of faith. And as I practice it, I will receive my children. I will have my marriage fulfilled. I will have stability in my business. My ministry will grow. My members will grow. Everything I lay hand upon shall prosper. I will participate in project offering. And you will make me a living project in your hand. As I join to build your church, you will lay hand to build up my life and my home. I will not close my eyes on the poor. And you will not close your eyes over me and my house. With you, God, I have more than enough. You put the burden of my finances in the heart of men. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout a living amen. Yeah. Now we conclude this seminar today before we receive the final impartation by concluding the teaching that we began yesterday. You remember we concluded with Moses. Hmm? The pro producer is um, a life story in Victoria apostolic presentation of our dear father Blessed memory, Maurice Hello. One of the encounters he had 
we shared and began to share yesterday was how he got discouraged one day. After God has converted 35,000 in one singular meeting in the one small island. And he felt that God was supposed to be talking to him mouth to mouth like Moses. Praise God. He said, God, why not make me like the biblical father that, that I have studied? Make me like one of them. Because you are working a work in my life. That's amazing. And God came to him. You know, when you ask God questions, God will ask you questions. But when you pray, God will answer. Did you get it? God does not answer questions. If you ask God questions, God will respond with questions. For those that do know their God shall be strong. God, why not make me? That's not prayer. It would have been different. God, make me like one of these biblical. Why not make me? I said, okay. Who do you want to be like among them? Praise God. And as we saw yesterday, the best person they wanted to be like was Moses. You know, every time I studied the book of Exodus and saw the exploit of Moses, it's intimidating. It's amazing. Let my people go so that they will serve me. Who is that God that I, God, will let your people go? You will be my slave forevermore. And Moses will just lift up his hand or rod. God! I command lies to come down and consume this nation. And before the hand will come down, there are lies everywhere. Who will not want that? It's one place that look like an end. Racy. And the cast is rot. And the whole ocean divided into two and became a war on both sides. Who will not like that kind of power? Who no like better thing? Praise God. Are we here? Now, you remind that. You remember that? We treated that in Zero Dominion. The power of the east wind and the power of the west wind. When the east wind brought the judgment, it commanded the west wind to take away the judgment. You remember the issue of Goshen? Light in Goshen. Darkness in Egypt. Who will not like, want to be like Moses? Morris alone wanted every cripple in every street to be healed. So when he said, make me like Moses, he was yearning for power, for exploit. And look at it. Do you know that as long as Moses was in obedience with God, God used him. But the moment he became proud and began to argue with God, he didn't know that God didn't like it. It looks normal. Speak to the rock. So that people can know that it's not only by your rod that can walk. I can also walk with your mouth. He was too used to rod that he didn't want to use his mouth. He used the rod against his mouth and strike the rock. That rock was Christ. Come on, are we here? That's why every time Christ said, before Moses, before Abraham, I was. In Corinthians, he said through Paul, I was that rock that they drank water from. God can manifest himself mysteriously in any time, at any time. Are we here? So yesterday we saw that Moses did not fulfill God's plan according to God's desire for him. God told Moses that Moses disobeyed him. 
if they ask your pastor about you, will he give account of your disobedience to him? Remember, several areas of life where Moses obeyed God, but God did not count his obedience. God counted his disobedience. The Bible said in Ezekiel that when a righteous man stop being righteous, the record of his righteousness shall no longer count. God is not interested in your yesterday's obedience. God is interested in your today's obedience. What is God asking you to do now? I've told you in this seminar, start believing God for current encounters, for current testimonies. Stop living in your past glory. Five years ago, God did this for me. Ten years ago, God did for me. What did God do for you last month? What did he do for you this month? How were you praying ten years ago? How are you praying now? How were you living ten years ago? How are you living now? God is concerned about you now. Are we here? The greatest thing you can do against yourself as a Christian is to disobey the authority God has placed over your head. It's disobedience to God. That's a violation to God. Watch familiarities before familiarity stop you. No matter how close you are to your pastor, recognize his authority over you. No matter how close you are to your head of department, recognize his authority over you. Even if you are better than them, wait for your turn. Are you hearing me? Do what? Wait for your turn. It will come to you. Now let us look at the next thing God asked. Maurice Lulu. When he told him that Moses disobeyed him and that he was not going to make him like Moses. I thought for a moment and I said, Oh Lord, if only I could be like Abraham. How we here? Oh Lord, if only I could. Are you responding? You want to know the page that we are? Page 43. If only I could be like Abraham. God said, why do you want to be like Abraham? I said, because I don't have as much faith as I should have. I don't have as much faith as you have. Abraham is the author and the founder of faith. Is that correct? Abraham was the father of faith. Look at how he journeyed following you. He did not even know where he was going. But he was faithful in his commitment to follow you by faith. And you counted it unto him for righteousness. I said, just look at me, God. I do not have enough faith. I do not even have the faith that I ought to have. How many have, have ever said this? Lord. I just do not have enough faith. Many have confessed these weaknesses before God. We have faced problems. We have wanted to reach out and lay hands on the sick. The afflicted people and touch them. But we are afraid. We did not have the faith to speak the word. We felt. We felt we did not have the faith we should have. Here I was saying to God, God, Look at me. I cannot even believe you. Look at how weak my faith is. God, if I could just be like Abraham. God said to me, Maurice, do you love your wife? Are we here? You know, I asked that. When you ask God a question, God will reply you a question. Do you love your wife? I said, my wife? Of course. I love my wife. What does that have to do with, with it? God said, let me ask you a question. 
Suppose a knock came on your door and two or three men stood there and said, we hear that your wife, Teresa, is a very beautiful woman. We have come to get her. Give us your wife. What would you do? I said, God, you know what I will do. They will have to take her over my dead body. Praise God. They will have to take her over what? My dead body. They will have to kill me first. Christians or no Christian, I will pick up the nearest thing and beat them. God said, that's right, Maurice. I know you. That's exactly what will happen. Praise God. That's exactly what will happen. What will happen? But Abraham did just the opposite. He gave his wife away to another man out of fear for his own life. Abraham was journeying through a strange land and he was so afraid of what he might face that he told people his wife was, was really his sister. He delivered his wife into the hands of the rule of that land so that he could escape with his life. If I had not come down and stopped Abimelech, from committing adultery with Abraham's wife, I would have had to kill that man and his entire nation in judgment. There was a long pause as I lay on the floor, hugging the Bible. Then God said to me, All right, Maurice, now, who do you want to be like again? Praise the Lord. Are you still here? I don't know which you're modeling in life. But there's always a pause. There's always a pause. So you will discover that only God himself, only God himself is complete. But we are not done yet. You will enjoy the story more before we pray. Each of these men were great men of God and had many wonderful qualities we should emulate. But God was trying to teach me a lesson. I said, God, please, be patient with me. Just one more. If I could be like David. You will have an encounter. Nobody comes to pro producer conference without an encounter. In the next one month of your life, the memory of this meeting, as I'm speaking and touching you, and this man of God has taught you, you are going to have an encounter that will overhaul your life. In the name of Jesus. Look at it. Let me be like David, I said. Because David panted and longed after you with a heart that expresses his innermost yearning. He worshiped and praised you as few ever did. If I could only have a heart like David's, I could love you more than anything in this world. Let me be like David. God, look at me. I don't pray as much as I ought to. I don't seek you as much as I ought to. God, my heart is not like David. I don't seek you and long for you and search for you as I ought to. Look at how David longed for you. Look at his hunger, his desire. How he ran after you. Lord, I do not have that kind of love. Every minister I know has at some time had this experience. They are hard to go in the pulpit at last moment and have felt ill prepared. They have come before God in, a, in honesty and said, oh God, forgive me. I just didn't spend enough time. I just didn't spend enough time with you. I just haven't sought you enough. This is something lacking inside me. I should be crying and craving after you. You remember that this encounter and experience was when he was to prepare to go and minister to the 35,000 people. So apparently he must have been busy with so many things. And then just look at the time. It's time to go and preach to 35,000 people. He felt, I am empty. And then he fell into trance. This is just a trance encounter. Praise God. 
God said, Morris, did you ever kill anybody? I said, no. God said to me, Morris, did you ever take another man's wife? I said, no, I never have. God said, David did. David did. He saw a woman who belonged to another man. He was so filled with the spirit of lust that he desired this woman. He took her. He had a husband sent to the front line of battle so that he, he would be killed and David could have his woman, this woman, the rest of his life. When God said these things to me, I broke down and wept. We could go on and on. Praise the Lord. Now, you will understand that God has forgiven David. But the consequences of that encounter never left the house of David. If you are a man of God in this meeting, if you want to fulfill the call of God upon your life, God will send women to you. But you owe it to God in all honesty never to have anything to do with another woman. Especially when you are married. Are we here? What saved Moses was his intelligence, his courage to respond to God by knowing God as God of mercy. You might not be as lucky as David was. Praise the Lord. Remember that a good name is better than billions of wealth. If you have no house, if you have no money, make sure you leave a good name behind. Power your ministry and your life and your family on the line of integrity. Never destroy anyone's home. Either by misapplication of your gift in prophecy. Either by jealousy or by manipulation to meet your needs. Be yourself. Minister in integrity. Stand in integrity. There's nothing on this earth God will not give you if you can wait on God. I see you manifesting the appointment of God. Let's conclude this narration. Great men of faith. I am not insulting this great man of God in telling you these things. I am just showing a very real experience I had. They were great men of faith who loved God and followed him. God was trying to show me a very great lesson. This is not to take anything away from David because David was a great man. And he had his great characteristics including that to remain just longing after God. Moses had this great characteristics, humility that we spoke about, and much more. Abraham had this great characteristics in his life and his spiritual experience with God. However, after I went through these experiences on that floor, I just wept like a little baby. I looked up at God and I said, God, I understand what you're trying to tell me. It is not Moses. It is not Abraham. It is not David. It's all because of the grace of the almighty God. Come on, are we here? The truth God revealed to me so strongly through this one. The sad where you see it. These great men of the Bible were just men. They were just ordinary human beings. They had their fault and their failures. They knew some shortcomings. All of these men were great only because of what God did for them. Because of what God made of them and did through them. I said, God, I think I understand what you are trying to tell me. It is all because of your grace. It is not what we are that you are looking for. But it is what you, by your divine power, flowing through our lives, can make of us that is important. God, I want to be like you. Do we hear? In conclusion, because of God's grace. Somebody said because of God's grace. The only reason God uses any of us is because of his grace. For the first time in my life, I understand that it was not David. 
in his greatness. It was not Abraham in his ability. It was not Moses in his willingness. But for the grace of the Almighty God, God never would have used Moses. But for the grace of the Almighty God, God never would have used Abraham. Look at your hands. They are no different from the hands of David, Abraham, or Moses. God is not depending on what we are, but upon what he can make of us. Whatever your weakness today, remember God is not depending on what you are, but what he can make out of you. He never intended to depend on what you possess. Man has nothing in himself, but that that he has received from above. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much food. Are you ready to die? So that his life, his joy, his faith, his power can come to you. And that is just what we have this afternoon. In conclusion, a young man came to me and said, what will I do to become a promising, fulfilling man of God. And I said to him, have you died? He said, how? I am talking about the call of God upon my life. I said, God will not use anyone who I refuse to die. Praise God. He didn't understand, so I opened the Bible for him. Time will not permit me to do that now. When you know insult, when you see a lot of fault, when you cannot love the unlovable, when you always recognize that you are cheated, you will be on feet as a vessel that God will ride on. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, I have determined in my heart to know nothing among you other than Christ and him crucified. You will serve God with a crucified body. A body that has been dead and killed to the pain of this world. Are we here? A body that knows that this world is just a transit voyage to where we are going. You must die to your flesh for your spirit man to live. You must be ready to forgive in January those that will offend you in December. You must see human being as mortal. And that God is riding on you to help them. You must see yourself as a solution sent by God to humanity. Morisellolo died that day and wake up to the grace of God. You are called by the grace of God to serve God by his grace. You will take responsibilities. For all that happens around you. And you will give. Every account to God. I think from this day. So many ministries will come back to life. So many families will come back to life. And the joy of the Lord. Will rise to our destinies. Shall we rise to our feet. I don't know the areas of your life that you are struggling with God. But you can settle it in just three minutes. We give glory to the Lord He reign. We give glory to the Lord He reign. He reign. He reigns, he reigns. 
We get glory to the Lord. We get glory to the Lord. He reigns. We get glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We get glory to the Lord. He reigns. Alpha. Omega. Alpha, Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of my presence today. You are worthy of my presence today. Alpha, Alabata, Omega, Alabata, Alpha, Alabata, Omega, you are worthy of my presence today. You are worthy of my presence today. Jiro, 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 Ganeme. Jiro, 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 Ganeme. Papa, Papa, Papa. La 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 Jiro, Jiro, Kaneme. Jiro, 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 Kaneme. Jiro, Kaneme. Jiro, Kaneme. Oh, Kaneme, you call me my sinner, Jiro. Jiro, Kaneme. Jiro, Kaneme. Oh, Kaneme, you call me my sinner, Jiro. Let's clap, give clap, watch the boyfriend for Jesus.